seated if you would please take your bibles and find the book of acts tonight acts chapter 11 i do want you to write in one more prayer request and i just remembered when i sat down there next to brother yachter um precious lady named marilyn will be attending church this sunday eternal life and so we have someone prepared to speak with her when she comes and i want you to bathe that situation in prayer if you would her name would be marilyn that she would accept the Lord Jesus as her Savior this coming Sunday. All right, we're in our series on Wednesday nights that the Lord laid on my heart on the subject of remembering. Uh, We entitled the series, as you see it there, A Weekly Reminder. We've been doing this throughout the summertime, and we will continue uh, as the Lord continues to lead and guide and direct. Um, These have not been necessarily rocket science studies, um, just more of a reminders of what we already know and what we may even be established in. Peter, writing in his epistle, said even though that those believers knew some things and were established in them, it was still fitting for him to remind them of some things. I find sometimes on Wednesday night, it's just a blessing to be reminded of what we already know, uh, simply, powerfully, Practically, I find a lot of times in doing um, meeting with people and speaking to them as their pastor and what I guess would be considered a counseling session, most of the time, people don't come see the pastor and the pastor tells them something that they don't already know. It's not where they come and they sit down and they say, Pastor, I want to talk to you about a situation and I want to get your opinion on the situation. When When I give them my opinion on the situation, Most of the time, this is the opinion that they already know or the answer that they already know is coming, but it's just good to be reminded of it. It's good to be encouraged by it. And so we've been looking at these. I met with a a brother today, and uh, he's been to all of these Wednesday night series, and he had been taking notes and kind of read me back the notes he'd been taking from the services and just blessed me on, on how God was using those reminders in his life. And so, keying in on the word remember, I'd like you to go tonight to Acts chapter 11, verse number 16, and when I read it to you and announce my title to you, just hang in there with me. I need you to probably stay with me to the end, and do not dismiss um, the relativeness or the practicality of tonight's lesson, and when when you leave here tonight, I, I want you just to love the Lord that much more and to know his presence in your life. Peter is speaking here. Luke is writing. Luke wrote the gospel of Luke. He wrote the book of Acts under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. And Peter says this in verse number 16, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with, say that please at the end of that verse, the Holy Ghost. I want to speak to you tonight, preach to you tonight, a message entitled, Remember, You Are Baptized by the Holy Ghost. And I want to say that again, and then I want you to form in your mind some type of sentence of meaning. So when Pastor Hunter says, you are baptized by the Holy Ghost, somewhere in your mind, get a sentence about what that means to you. Put a definition to that term. Hopefully, your definition has nothing to do with water. Because the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not a baptism that is with water. It really was a baptism of fire. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is something that I think that God's people forget that this has happened to them. A lot of confusion around the subject of, of the word baptism itself. Uh, The Greek word there, baptized, means to immerse. The Bible talks about two types of baptism, and they must be understood in their proper order. 
you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then you have what's called believer's baptism or water baptism. One of these baptisms brings about salvation. One of these baptisms confirms salvation. The Apostle Peter here is writing about a moment when he remembered what he heard in the book of Acts chapter number one. Go back there if you would. Hold your hand here, please. Acts chapter one. This, you know, is um, right before the Lord Jesus ascends up into heaven. So he has died. He has been buried He has resurrected. He has walked on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And if you look at Acts chapter 1, verse number, uh, we could go with verse number 4 for sake of time. And being assembled together with them, commanded them, these were his disciples, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So Peter is writing about a moment that happens in his life where he remembers what Jesus says about this baptism of the Holy Ghost. The moment that Peter is writing about here in Acts chapter 11, verse number 16, he's giving a testimony or a report here to the Jewish believers of what happened in Acts chapter 10. If you were to go to Acts chapter 10, which is one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible, verse number one, there's a man here named Cornelius. We know that Cornelius was a Roman man. He was the centurion of the band called the Italian band. And Acts chapter number 10 is all about Cornelius' life um, leading up to this moment. It's also what God does in the life of Peter. And I'll explain this to you in just a moment. But Acts chapter 11, verse number 16, Peter is testifying of a moment that happened where he remembered what Jesus said, that we would be baptized by the Holy Ghost. Just for sake of my audience, does anybody in here have enough courage to say that you have been baptized by the Holy Ghost? Okay, okay. Did they answer right or wrong, Pastor? Because I didn't dare raise my hand. We'll see in just a moment. Verse number 44 of chapter 10, please. In verse number 44 of chapter 10, Peter has made his way into Cornelius' house. And Peter had been invited by Cornelius. In verse number 36 of the chapter, begins to teach Cornelius about Jesus. Matter of the fact, he says in verse 36, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. And so Peter preaches to Cornelius, first time Cornelius has ever heard about Jesus, ever heard the gospel preached. And then something happens in the middle of this message in verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words in the middle of the preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, that's the way they describe the Jews, because Cornelius was a Gentile. The Jews that went with Peter to preach to the Gentile, they're watching this Gentile, and they're referred to as the circumcision because of the sign of the Abrahamic covenant there. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water 
that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. So in verse 47, Peter is bringing up water baptism, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So this is the salvation experience of Cornelius. And Peter gets called on the carpet in chapter number 11 by the Jews, how dare you preach the gospel to the Gentile? In the Jews' mind, the Gentile was not worthy of the gospel. Praise God, that might be man's opinion, but God sees all men and women as worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? So the Jews want an understanding of what in the world did you do and what in the world is going on down there. So when you come back into chapter number 11, look if you would at verse number four, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. He tells the story about what God has done. He gets down here to verse number 15, and he says, and as I begin to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. That's what it was happened in verse 44 of chapter 10. And then he says something in verse 15 that's important. Look at it if you would. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on what? Us at the beginning. Let me just put you a note there. I don't care who you are. Everybody gets saved the same way, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, okay? So Peter's got to defend what happened and he says, fellas, all I know to tell you is what happened to me happened to them. Verse 16 of chapter number 11, Peter said, then remembered I what the Lord told us. The Lord told us that John would indeed baptize with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Okay, time out. When was Peter baptized with the Holy Ghost. At what event in the New Testament? Acts chapter two. At Pentecost. You remember, the Lord Jesus told them to wait in the upper room until they be endued with power on high. And you remember that those cloven tongues of fire sat upon them and the Holy Spirit of God fell upon them, the Holy Spirit of God indwelt them. There was given immediate evidence of that. I'll show you in just a moment. So in Acts chapter two, the Jews experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter number 10, the Gentiles experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So what exactly is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And when does it happen? The baptism of the Holy Ghost is when the Holy Ghost immerses you into the body of Christ, okay? So when we go into, into water baptism, you are immersed into the water as water baptism in testimony that you have already been baptized by the Holy Spirit of God. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit of God after Acts chapter two, where, where it came upon those men in that room, happened from there, the Bible teaches, at the moment that you get saved. The moment, look at this, verse number 44 of chapter 10, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them, which all heard the word. Come over to Acts chapter 11, verse 17. Let's go deeper into what is meant by hearing the word of God. For as much then as God gave them the light gift as he did unto us, who, what's that word class? believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the moment that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, 
The Holy Spirit of God baptizes you, immerses you through this indwellment into the body of Christ, which the body of Christ on the earth today is called the church. Okay? So really and truthfully, Peter is remembering what Jesus said that, that we would be baptized by the Holy Ghost. Now, Peter knew he was baptized by the Holy Ghost, but he never dreamed that a Gentile would be baptized by the Holy Ghost. So let's just make sure I know my audience. If you did not have enough courage to raise your hand that you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost, understand that's the same thing like saying I've been born again. So if you've been born again, you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost. So let's try that again. How many of us have been baptized by the Holy Ghost? Okay, but, 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 but pastor, wait a minute. In the islands or back in my home country, they had to lay hands on you and you had to shake and you had to do all of this and it was something that, that, that the apostle did and this was this grand event. These people were baptized by the Holy Ghost without human touch. No man can impart salvation to you. God imparts salvation to you, right? So, but what you need to know is that word baptism is the immersing. So the Holy Spirit of God, as I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, immerses me into the body of Christ. Now, this is beautiful because the baptism of the Holy Ghost that is evidenced here by Cornelius, as should be evidenced in our life, is immediately evidenced. When you go back to verses 46, or 44 to 48 of chapter number 10, you will see that immediately they were saved, immediately they were indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God as, as the Holy Ghost fell on them. Immediately they begin to evidence that by the gift of the Spirit of God. Immediately did they begin to praise God in, in, uh, with this gift. Uh, look, if you would, at verse number 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Immediately, upon being baptized with the, by the Holy Ghost, they were open to water baptism. So time out here. If you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost and you've raised your hand that you've been saved, that same other hand should go up when I say, have you been water baptized? Right? Now, baptism of the Holy Spirit of God is, what, is when you're saved. That's when you're born again. Water baptism has nothing to do with salvation, but it tells everybody as I'm being water baptized, I've already been baptized by the Holy Ghost. Okay. They were open to this water baptism. Look, if you would, at verse number 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So as they were baptized by the Holy Ghost, which was the evidence of true salvation, hearing and believing the word of God, the Holy Spirit indwelt them, then birthed them into the church, they wanted to know more about God. They had a thirst for God. Most of the reason that church Christians don't have a thirst for God is because they've not been baptized by the Holy Ghost. I got to say that again. By the way, a church Christian is not the same as a Bible Christian. So let me say it again. Most of the reason that church Christians want nothing to do with reading the word, praying, righteous living, or nothing like that is because they really and truly haven't been baptized by the Holy Ghost. They might have some type of church Christianity they don't have God's Christianity because once the Holy Spirit of God indwells you and immerses you into the body of Christ, 
you want what he wants. Okay? This is evidence of a new believer here. This is why you better know that you've been born again. Okay, so, so Peter's got this moment where he's testifying and he remembers, man, this, this must have been what the Lord said. Now, now why, why, would this, why would you preach this to us tonight? Because this baptism of the Holy Ghost had to be so refreshing to Cornelius. And I want your remembrance of your baptism of the Holy Ghost to refresh you tonight. So come back here just a second to Acts chapter 10 and come over, if you would, please, to verse number one and just read with me a second and let me get to a, a certain verse here. Um, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now watch this. He, he's a devout man. He's one that fears God with all his house. He's one that gives much alms to the people, so he's a giver. He prayed to God always, so he's a prayer. He saw in a vision, so God gave him a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him. So, so he's visited by an angel. I mean, these are great things. The angel knows his name. He sees the angel in verse number four, and he's afraid. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God, right? All of these things are wonderful and awesome and awful and horrible, because go, if you would, please, to Acts chapter 11 and look at verse number 12. Hold your hand in verse number, in chapter 10. We're coming back. Peter says, and the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house, speaking of Cornelius, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be what? Are you telling me we have a devout man who fears God, who gives money, who had a vision of God, who an angel knew his name, who told him his prayers had been heard, and he's not a believer? He's unsaved. If Cornelius would have died in verses 5 to 43, he'd have went to hell. When you read those verses... They sum, up, they sum up, look if you would please, at ver, go back to chapter 10 and look at verse number five. This is what the Lord told Cornelius. Send men to Joppa, call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. Now watch verse number six. He shall tell thee, what? Say it out loud. What thou oughtest to do. I've been meditating that like crazy. So, so here's Cornelius. Loves God. Prays to God. Praise, religious, practicing. But he's not been baptized by the Holy Ghost. He's not been saved. So just by the fact that God answers the question, he will tell you what you ought to do, means that Cornelius must have been praying something like, I must be missing something here. I think this tells you that Cornelius, as religious as he was, did not have peace with God. 
By the way, most people who practice religion to go to heaven don't have peace. We don't get peace till we receive the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus Christ. Peter must have still been looking for direction. I'm doing everything. I'm praying. I'm fasting. There's got to be something more. He, everything about God is outward. He's not personally connected. There's got to be something I'm missing. What do I need to do? Always trying to be sure. I mean, he's, Fasting wait late into the day, he's praying. So I have a man here who is practicing religion, but he has no relationship with God. He's not been baptized by the Holy Ghost. I have a man here who's searching for God vehemently, but he's not secure. I've got a man here who's practicing religion, but he has no connection to a personal God. Oh, he's praying, but he ain't praising. And by the way, there's no praising like after you get saved. Can you imagine this man when Peter came in and preached to him Jesus? And everything fell in place. And he said, I need Jesus to be saved. I believe him to be the Lord. I believe that he died and was buried and rose again. And I accept him. And the Bible says at that moment, in the middle of that message, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon him. He was baptized by the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not something Pastor Hunter does to you. It's something the Holy Spirit does to you. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is not something that happens inside of a, a church program. It happens inside of your heart. The baptism of the Holy Ghost has nothing to do with water, but everything to do with faith in the Lord. Closing point. I really try to imagine Cornelius after Peter left. Peace, joy, happiness. Why? Because listen, for the first time in his life, God was not external. God was internal. If God's internal in you, would you say amen? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit of God, when he baptizes you into the body of Christ, when you're born again, he seals you under the day of redemption, which means you don't have to get up every day and pray and fast to be saved. You don't have to get up every day and do good works so you can be saved. You're saved because God lives in you. Think about that religious man, all of the pressure of doing, doing, doing. And God said to him, I'm going to have a man sent here and tell you what you ought to do. And the only thing you need to do is believe on him who's done everything. He fills. He leads. He controls. When you don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit of God Praise for you, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. The Holy Spirit of God assures you that you're part of the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit of God assures you that you've been saved. He witnesses with your spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is the great comforter. He's the one that comes alongside us and helps us. He's the one that guides us into all truth. He's the illuminator of the scripture. I wrote this down. Salvation is spiritual. Christianity is spiritual. Maybe you just need to be reminded tonight that you weren't saved by a program, sir. You were saved by a person. You were baptized by the Holy Ghost.
It's not religion. It's a relation. You're not still searching. You're secure. You're not praying with hope. You're praising with assurance. He's in you. Cornelius never needed to feel lonely because God was in him. So let me address to you tonight that feel lonely. If you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit of God, why would you feel lonely? He's in you. Let me address those of you that don't, you're so burdened with something like I get sometimes. I don't even know what to tell God. God, I don't even know what to pray for. I don't even know what to say. The Holy Spirit comes alongside and just prays the will of the Father for me. God, that's great. When I worry about condemnation because I, may, I went back into sin somewhere or the devil gets a hold of my mind, it's the Holy Spirit of God that tells me, Tom, there's no condemnation to them that walk in Christ Jesus. I know, but God must hate me. No, Tom, no one or no thing can separate you from the love of God. When I don't know which way to go, it's the Holy Spirit of God that takes the Bible and guides me. When I'm burdened over a scripture, it's the Holy Spirit of God that illumines the scripture to me. When I'm out of control, it's the Holy Spirit of God that Fills me, tempers me, settles me. Folks, you weren't just saved by a program. You were baptized by the Holy Ghost. No wonder it says they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Yeah, you're his kid. He's baptized you in the body of Christ. He's real. He's intimate. He's deep. He's there. And he's ministering to us all the time. This makes me glad to be saved. If you're glad to be saved, say amen. All right. I hope you remember, you've been baptized by the Holy Ghost, man. Let that bring some joy into your life. Would you pray? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, God, Peter's mind was blown when he saw the Gentile get poured out the same way, poured upon by the Holy Ghost as he heard and believed. Many of us in this room, we heard the gospel, we believed the gospel, and the Holy Spirit of God baptized us into the body of Christ. He indwelt us, he immersed us, Salvation is personal. You relate to us through that, through the precious Holy Spirit of God. You lead us, you guide us, you speak to us, you comfort us, you correct us, you seal us, you fill us, you illumine the scriptures to us. Peter went away from Cornelius, but the Holy Spirit of God was there to stay. Tonight, some believer just needs to be reminded that the Holy Spirit of God is in them. He's baptized them into the body of Christ. And he's there to minister to them. He's there to encourage them. He's there to pray with them. He's there to help them worship God. Lord, there might be somebody in the room and they've never been born again. They're religious. They love God. They respect God. They do religious things, but they've never been baptized by the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean they've gone into the water. That doesn't mean some preacher, we're not talking about putting their hands on me. They've never prayed and accepted that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that he is the one that has paid their debt. He died for them. He was buried, and he rose again. And just like Peter preached Jesus to Cornelius, and Cornelius believed upon him, they need to put their faith and trust and accept the Lord. I wonder tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed, and I'm moved by the Holy Spirit of God to do this, so just give me a second.
you're here tonight and you have never formally believed upon the Lord in your heart. You have never acknowledged yourself as a sinner. You have never accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior. You could do that tonight where you sit. If tonight you wanted to be baptized by the Holy Ghost, which means you wanted to receive Christ's salvation, and you wanted to be saved, go to heaven when you die. Right where you sit, you could say, Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, but I know Jesus is the Savior. And I know that he died for me on the cross, he was buried for me, and he rose again for me. The best I know how, I want to be saved. I accept the Lord Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I acknowledge my sin, and I ask you for your forgiveness. Would you please cleanse me? Would you save me? Would you baptize me by the Holy Ghost? Would you take me to heaven when I die? And you would say something like, thank you, God, for hearing my prayer. and Thank you for coming into my heart. Nobody looking, heads bowed and eyes closed, except for pastor. You're here tonight, you're seated in that pew, and honestly, you ask Christ to save you, you ask the Holy Spirit of God to baptize you into the Lord, and you've given your heart to Christ tonight. Would you just lift your hand and let me see it, slip it up, slip it down. Pastor, I prayed that, and I thank God for that opportunity. God bless you, I see those hands. Put them down. God bless you, God bless you. Wonderful. Christian, Leave here tonight knowing God is in you. The Holy Spirit of God is there. How wonderful, how marvelous to care for us. Have your way and will now, Lord, in our lives. May we leave here refreshed. For those of us that are scared, may we go home and say, it's going to be okay. Holy Spirit of God is going to help me. For those of us that don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit of God will help me pray. For those of us that feel lonely, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. For those of us that feel condemnation, we know that we've been totally forgiven. For those of us that think that you hate us, God, the Holy Spirit's there to remind us that you're a God of love. For those of us that need a miracle, we know the Holy Spirit of God is the power of God, the muscle of God. For those of us that just need to cry, we need to weep, we need to grieve, you're the great comforter. Man. It's awesome to know you. We love you. Thank you for our Bible study tonight. In Jesus' name.